Hello and welcome to another great episode of the Great Debaters Contest. I am your host, Austin Nyambok. And I am Mariam Bishar. So today we are asking this very important question. Should random drug tests be mandatory in schools to curb drug abuse? And since it's the Nationals, we know we only bring you the best of the best, the top cream in the world of debates. Today, the two giants that face off are Starehe Gals and Nyeri Hai. We wish them the best in their debates. The motion this week is Random drug testing should be done in schools to curb drug abuse. Proposing the motion, Nyeri High School. Opposing the motion, Starehe Girls Center. Each contestant has three minutes to make their submissions. The audience also gets a chance to put their questions to each team. Each side will have an additional one minute to make a final statement. The judge's decision is final. The winning school will get an ICT chill-out zone with a widescreen TV, computers, webcams and internet connection. The teacher from the winning school gets 100,000 shillings courtesy of Chase Bank. The winning students each get a tablet courtesy of Safaricom, a gift hamper from Unilever and a gift hamper from Mimi.co.ke. And together they all win the title, The Great Debaters. May the best school win. first debater you have the stage. Friends, old and new, receive my regards. Before you is Bob Eric Kiru from Nyeri High School. I am an ardent supporter of this motion that random drug tests should be done in our schools to curb drug abuse. First things first, what is a drug? According to Oxford Dictionary, the eighth edition, a drug is any illegal substance or illegal substance that is taken into the body through injection, snorting, or sniffing for the mental and physical effects it has. What is to abuse a drug? This, ladies and gentlemen, is to use a drug for any purpose other than that which is, it is intended. Drug test, on the other hand, is examining the blood, urine, sweat, or any biological factor to ascertain whether or not somebody is using a drug. And what is to curb? To curb is to limit or control something. The question we lay on the table today is, should random drug tests be carried on in our, in our schools? Ladies and gentlemen, lenders, your ears, as my colleagues and I lay these facts on, this t on the table, demystifying this issue. Allow me to use the facts and figures by Nakada. Alcohol swallows about 21.3% of our youth each year. Tobacco, on the other hand, swallows about, uses, uh, takes about 20.3% of our youth. And marijuana takes about 34.1% each and every year. These are youths. These are people in the school-going age bracket. Ladies and gentlemen, these are our brothers. This is just like most of us here. That is why we must do something to curb this. And random drug test is just the first step towards making these people better. What random drug tests do, we identify somebody who is using a drug, and then from then on, they can undergo some of these procedures. There are a myriad of procedures here, like rehabilitation, other methods, methods of corrections. Ladies and gentlemen, this will also help us to pre prevent some of these drug-related illnesses, like liver cirrhosis, cancer, gum-related diseases, just to mention but a few. Should we desire to have a better Kenya? Should we desire to have a better society? We must start in our schools. You see. Lack of graduates in our high institutions of learning leads to lack of professionals. I'm hell over sure that should our judges, if they took drugs in schools, they will not be the professionals they are today. And lack of professionals leads to lack of a good livelihood in our nation. We see, ladies and gentlemen, drugs in our school, this is a potential demise to our nation. That is why, should there be any initiative labeled Okoa Kenya, I say, let us start in our schools. This is constitutional. It is constitutional, and mark you, it demands no push for a referendum. That is why random drug tests should first be in our schools, and then from henceforth, we can go elsewhere. We can take on these other methods, such like rehabilitation, making these people better. Thank you. First opposer, you have three minutes. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Zipporah Gaku from Starray Girls. And today, I strongly oppose the motion that states random drug testing should be done in schools to curb drug abuse. 
First and foremost, random drug testing leads to the infringement of constitutional rights and freedoms of the students. Like for instance, the discrimination and segregation that comes along from being labeled that so-and-so is a drug addict. This is enough to create depression in such students. And if we are going to create depression in a student, it might even lead to the student committing suicide. Do we really want to have more suicidal cases in our schools? I do not think so. The basic legal right of innocent till proven guilty will tend to be guilty till proven innocent. Because if we are going to have to conduct a random drug test to prove whether a student is an addict, is abusing drugs or not, then this means that our students will stop being students and will start being suspects. All this will create a lot of rebellion from the students, and this will tend to lead to more and more drug abuse in our schools. Why should we waste all our finances in such a counterproductive scheme and policy? We can always channel this money to more development schemes which are more productive. What follows after doing the drug, random drug test? Rehabilitation. The questions that we should first start asking ourselves is, do we have enough rehabilitation centers to take care of all the drug abusers that will be found? Are there enough funds and even equipment that are going to be employed in this policy? And in developing nations which have got more pressing issues to address, it will be such a challenge for them I don't think it is wise for us to recommend this policy to them because they must get their priorities right and they must first start by dealing with the major challenges that face them. A tree tends to sprout when cut by the stem. But if you pull it out by the roots, it dries up. If we are to get rid and kill this menace of drug abuse, which has become like a perennial plant in our society, then we must pull it by the roots. And by this I mean that we have to get rid of the sources and the supply of drugs to our students. This is the most essential and the surest way of curbing drug abuse. And as Miguel once said, when you get rid of the causes, the effect ceases. So if we are to get rid of drug abuse in our schools, then we must get rid of the sources and the causes of this drug abuse. That is the surest and the most essential way, rather than introducing a, a testing which is only going to give us who and who are abusing drugs, but will not give us the whys and the reasons and even the ways in which these students abuse drugs. Thank you. The proposers, you have three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that each one of us here knows somebody somewhere who may be starting on drugs or somebody was still already hooked in drugs. The name is Brian Maroe Wamai from New High School and I'm here to propose the motion that states random drug testing should be done in our schools in order to curb drug abuse. First things first, while the proposers say that what this drug test will do is that they will lead to depression, what I'm here to say is that, well, when one is identified to be taking a drug, he or she is picked up, taken to a rehabilitation center where these, these, these lessons will be carried out. They will help him or her to get out of drugs. And you also say that it will lead to expenses, more expenses on the government. I'd like to tell you that a school in Nevasha, Father Abraham's Boys High School to be precise, used the principal just shaved the boys' hairs so that he can know who is taking drugs. Well, I'd like to ask you, how much is it to shave one's head? Uh, I think it's so cheap that it is so insignificant in our economy. Well, we need to protect the future leaders of tomorrow. We need to protect our society. It is estimated that 31.7%, note, 31.7% of new drug users are due to peer influence. What this drug test will do is that when we identify someone is taking drugs and pick him out of the crowd, out of that school, well, it will just be as of help in our schools. Let me give you an example. If you have a basket of apples and one apple is stale, it is only a matter of time that all these other apples will also be stale. But we need to protect all the other apples that will be of help to us by taking that bad apple out of that basket and we protect all the rest. To protect our future generations, drugs, according to WHO, have taken up to 25.23% of the youth population from 2010 to 2013, only four years. That is about 1.5 billion people. Well, if you're, not, if you're not tired of seeing youths die, if you're not tired of, of seeing 
pictures on TV that our young people are dying. Our young people who will be the leaders of tomorrow are being eradicated from the earth. Well, I think you just have a problem. And to my, to my opposers, let me tell you that, oh, ye ladies of little faith, we are already, you are already opposing something that we have not tried. You are already opposing something that we, we have not even seen its, its effect or whether it is going to work or not. Well, I'd love to tell you this. What we are advocating for is not that these drug tests are the best. We are saying that in conjunction with other methods like rehabilitation, counseling, or peer counseling, so that peers can influence each other and impromptu just sorry, such as in our schools. Well, and then you add that that secret ingredient of drug tests. It is what Professor Utonia Mende, I guess all of you know, would have called a perfect ingredient for our society of sugar, spice, mm, and everything nice. I rest my case. Opposer, you may give a rebuttal. You also have three minutes. If I had eight hours to cut down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my axe. This is according to Abraham Lincoln. Cutting a tree in this case refers to curbing drug abuse in schools. And by you proposing this motion, you are simply telling me to take one hour cut, sharpening my axe and seven hours cutting down the tree. I am sure it can't work out. Susan Wariara, Sarehe Girls. First and foremost, we are not talking about the expenses or we are not talking about the methods of conducting this, uh, the drug testing that is ex expensive. It is what follows after the drug testing that is expensive. Remember this drug test, the, the, the samples that have been taken, they have to be screened. A confirmatory, a confirmatory test has to be taken. And this is what we are saying is very, very expensive. You are also saying that this thing has not been tried. For your information, a uni, the University of Michigan, it conducted a research. And it went to schools, uh, 8, 891 schools. And these schools comprised of more than 70,000 students. The research found out that students in the 12th grade at schools with, which had testing, 37% of these students were abusing marijuana. In schools that were never having drug testing that is random, we had 36% abusing marijuana. Is that thing, it, it was found not to work and therefore it was abolished. Talking of random drug testing in schools, this activity is very inefficient. It is going to result to ineffect, it's going to be ineffective because it's going to result to development of concealment techniques. Students are students. We want to outsmart our testers. So what are we going to do? We're simply going to cheat in the tests that, that are being conducted. For instance, you are saying that shaving hair is not expensive. A school in the US, after the students realized that hair was part of the samples that was being used to conduct drug testing in their schools, what these students simply used to do, they used to shave their hair practically every morning. Therefore, it was found to be ineffective again and the drug testing stopped. The ineffectiveness will come in terms of, let's say for example, we are taking urine as a sample. These students are going to take water that is going to dilute this urine. And after the testing has been done, what are we going to simply to get? We are going to get negative results. But in real sense, these students are abusing drugs. If enough care is not taken, these students are going to take samples from other students that is going to be tested. Are we ready to do all that? Remember, this activity is very, very expensive. And these techniques that these students are going to use, they are going to hide, they are going to conceal that they are using drugs, and I don't think it's going to be ineffective. Let me ask you a question. What if someone abuses a drug that is not being tested by the panel? Because there are so, so many drugs that are being abused by students. And as we all know, when this is done, if someone, if someone is abusing a drug that the panel is not testing, trust me, he, will, he or she will be found to be negative and the, the, the drug test will be found not to be effective at all. So let, I, I, strongly say to say, I strongly stand to say that random drug testing should not be done in schools because it is not the most effective way to curb drug abuse in students. Thank you.
We will now take questions from the audience. My name is Salif Nyambok from Light Academy. And my question goes to the second proposer. You said something that shaving your head is so, so cheap that it is insignificant in our economy. Uh, do you know that almost 44-46% of Kenyans live below the poverty line? And how is this insignificant to our economy if they cannot even afford basic needs? I am Samson from Kaguma High School and my question was to the proposers. You talked of shaving hair as a way of curbing drug abuse. So what is the relationship between shaving hair and drug abuse and a drug test? If only you'd put that a bit clear. Thank you. Two more questions for the opposers. My name is Annie Trinya from the Mary Hill Girls High School. Are you suggesting that we should allow students who take drugs to continue taking the drugs and probably influence the rest to the same? I'm Lame Kotiano from Olympic High School. The second proposer said, random drug abuse is not the most effective way in curbing drug abuse. What are some of the ways that you can curb drug abuse? Thank you. To the third proposer, you have three minutes to respond. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in a war, and in this war, we need implements to assist us to fight against our enemy. Our enemy, drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, drugs have taken over our schools, our families, our friendships, our society. The name is Daniel Wega Kimathi from the Nyeri High School, and I propose the motion. To your question, yes, it may be expensive, the people living below the poverty line through taxation, but imagine, Youths dying every day because of drug abuse. Is this not a good price to pay for the life of a person? Would we not sacrifice that 50 shillings, that 10 shillings, to save an individual, to help make him better? To the second question. When you shave your hair in a school because you have been asked to by the administrators, they take the hair and they test it, and they find drugs in it. This is not the only method. I'm not saying that Shaving the hair is not the only method. It's just one method, and it's a cheap method. We are considering it in that way. We are looking at it in a manner whereby the source, killing the source of these people who abuse drugs is not enough. Take it in this way. Kill the market. Maybe somebody here around in Strathmore is selling bananas, but there's nobody buying these bananas. What if there's no one buying? It means that he's not getting any profit. Therefore, if if he's not getting profit, he's forced to move away. Same with drugs. If we come to you, you, my brother, and we take away that urge to take drugs, we make you a clean individual, then you'll, you'll, not, you'll have no need to buy these drugs. Therefore, those people who provide these drugs with, for, to you will not have a market. Therefore, they'll be forced to move away. We are saying that this, taking out this leaf, this one leaf is now the one you're taking the source away. One leaf. When you can cut the tree by eliminating the market, we can create a better Kenya in this way. Ladies and gentlemen, 52% of our teachers, the people who train us on peer counseling and guidance in counseling, state that it is not enough to use methods such as impromptu searches, such as uh, random searches to your bags and things like that, and guidance and counseling to help you. They state that these methods are not sufficient in themselves. So therefore, we are saying that if we add random drug tests, to these methods, we'll be able to complement, to act as a buffer, to help this individual. Ladies and gentlemen, according to NACADA, 83.6% of all students in Kenya have been educated on drug abuse. They know what they are doing is wrong. Ladies and gentlemen, these individuals continue doing it. Therefore, what are we asking? What are we stating? Maybe if we used fear, the fear of being caught, it would work. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the right side. Please join us. Third opposer, you have three minutes to respond. In China, there's a tree called Chinese bamboo. And when this tree was planted, it took 10 years to sprout out of the ground. But after the 10 years, it only took two years to grow into 10 feet tall tree. This is Evelyn Achaya, Saray Girl Center. To answer your questions, as said before, the University of Michigan in USA conducted a research 
And out of these research results, we found out that 37% of 70,000 students who were found in schools that there was random drug testing were, un were smoking marijuana. And 36% of these students in schools where there was no random drug testing were also smoking marijuana. This shows that random drug testing has no or little, if any, effect on drug abuse. And as a result, as the opposers, we decided to come out with solutions to the problem that we face in trying to curb this drug abuse. One of the solutions to answer all your questions is creating awareness on the dangers of drug abuse and its effects. As, as much as students have been told on the dangers of drug abuse and its effects, we still have to take a positive meaning out of those reference. Unless we take a positive meaning of the failures that we've had in the past, just because it has failed, it doesn't mean that you're not going to try it again. We have to have hope and keep on trying until we succeed and try to curb this drug abuse. Two, instead of the government wasting all its resources in trying to conduct a test that is not very useful or does not give us solutions, why, does the government, why doesn't the government invest this money in peer group programs and other out of school programs so that students uh, form these programs, for example, Martin's Pledge Against Drug Abuse, because peer influence is the greatest influence that makes these students indulge in drug abuse. And it's this same peer influence that can be used in a positive way by encouraging these students to use, to stop using the drugs because they have their effects. Three, the main reason as well is students involved in drugs because they want to build, build their self-esteem, they want to communicate, they're trying to handle some of these social problems that we face. Now, instead of trying to cut a, 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 a tree by its leaf, why don't we cut a tree by its root? Let's get down to the root of these problems and find the reason as to why these students are using these drugs. Maybe it's because of the social problem, maybe because of poverty, because of stress. Now, the government needs to introduce programs in school that teach skills such as self-control, emotional awareness, communication, communication skills, assertiveness, and problem solving. And this is going to curb drug abuse in a very effective way. Four, when I was a small child, my grandmother once left me at home, and I saw my uncle smoke. And because I saw him smoke, I thought it was a good idea. I took some piece of paper, rolled some leaves inside, lit it, and I began smoking. I smoked until the whole the whole paper was over. And then my, my grandmother gets me and she really punishes me. First and foremost, I really thank God that my grandmother made I mean, an impact in my life by punishing me and correcting me. But I still blame my grandmother because if someone had created awareness to her that the main way of so, trying to solve my problem was to go to my uncle and try to let him know that it was wrong. And then I would have changed and set at large. But now that I'm here and we need to change our mindset about this, we have to go and talk to these celebrities who are the main influence to people in our societies, so that they can change for the better. And I'm so sure as youths, these celebrities are our role models. We are going to change. Open up our minds, Africans. Open up our minds, people. We need to change. Thank you very much, and please join us to support this motion. Closing arguments from both teams. The proposers, you may begin. Imagine if I saw my uncle smoking, and I decided to smoke also. And I realized, before I rolled out that paper, that maybe if the drugs were in it, tomorrow I would have a random drug test in my school. Do you think I would? Ladies and gentlemen, we are at an impasse here. They won't listen to us, we won't listen to them. But I'm sure, if you use logic, simple logic, you will realize that you don't want your friend to die. Imagine that girl you'll speak to today, my fellow brothers. Imagine that boy you'll speak to. Do you want to see them again? I think so. Ladies and gentlemen, here we're talking about saving that small amount, as she has said. That small amount of people who stopped using that drug due to drug tests. It's like Jesus. He came for that one lamb, left the 99 back there, and took that one because he loves us all. He considers that one as a prize, ladies and gentlemen. We consider you as a prize, saving your life, helping you to live longer. Thank you. Opposers, you have a minute for your closing argument. Random drug testing in schools. Is it a shot in the arm or a shot in the foot? If our goal is to both protect students today and to provide them the tools to protect themselves in the future, then random drug testing in schools is a recipe for failure. Instead of random drug testing, information about the drug, the control, as well as counseling should be done to our students rather than the random drug testing in schools. And this is the most effective way to curb drug abuse in our schools. Indeed, random drug testing in schools should not be done in our schools. Thank you.
Tunyeri High, if you have the burden of proof, then you need to prove to us that one, there is a problem with the status quo, and then you must go ahead and give us the solution to those particular problems. Bob, I will not agree with the way you started us off. I will say it was a bad way to start us off. First of all, you gave us the percentages of the youth who are abusing drug. I say fine. Uh, are these this percentage, is it a reflection of the school-going children? You mentioned by passing that it, it is a reflection of the school-going children, which I found that it was an afterthought. Number two, the research carried out by NACADA, when was it conducted? Uh, that is very important for us. Is it 2010, 2011, 2014? Is it yesterday? Because the st statistics keeps on changing. Uh, give us current examples. In a nutshell, I didn't like the way you started. Brian, local examples, and you responded to the question of the workability of the plan. Is it workable? And I love the analogy of the apples, but when you're using acronyms and statistics, kindly explain the acronyms and the statistics. Give us the verbal footnote. When I come to Daniel, I also have a bit of question marks. Drugs have taken control of our schools, and my question is, how has it taken control of our schools? Can we have a representation of our statistics or percentages that in this particular country or in whichever country of your choice, the level of drug abuse stands at this particular percentage. Both teams, you've done it fairly well, but I'll say to Nyeri High, we expect a lot of teamwork from the team and good research. That means even to the people who have not yet presented, we want to see content mastery and content delivery. Thank you. The motion was very ripe for the two teams, and I want to commend both teams because I believe you're great speakers, all of you, on stage. However, um, we had to look into the details and what you're saying because it, it goes beyond you being a good speaker. And I'd like to address Tahir Girls, and I think this was a very good stand that you took to give us solutions. And we know that this is where we should be going. This is a very good angle that you stood, and um, this was also very ripe ground for Nyeri High now to come and tell us. Now that you're telling us the alternative will be informing these people and awareness, has, it, has this not been happening before? And if it has been happening, has it been effective? And I guess you did not ride on that, especially from the cross-examination, which now we look at the balancing and it did not come out very well. I would like to address one speaker, Evelyn Achaya. I'd like to say that was wow. And I think uh, you came and stamped the solution angle very well, and you gave credit to your team as well. Both teams did, did fairly well, and I wish you all the best uh, in the next stages. I think I really enjoyed listening to the two schools, Neri High and Starehe Girls. But you need to realize that now you're at the national level and you, you really have to keep to the standard that has been set by other schools. And so as we move forward, you know, the, the going is going to be really tough. But the tough get going. I need to commend Starehe Girls for teamwork. The essence of a debate is being able to work together. We are the first debater sets the pace and the rest follow through. And we saw that happening. And then the last debater coming in and you know, leaving us with that punch. And Evelyn was able to do that. However, I have concerns about your use of time and I penalized you heavily on that. When the bell goes, it is time for you to conclude and leave the stage. Uh, for Nyeri High, uh, I know, you know, uh, the, your predecessors set the pace and it's difficult or challenging to match up, but you did well. I, what I missed is the coordination and the teamwork. You all seem to have done your research, but you were not able to um, bring all this together and prepare for the debate as a team. Each of you came up, spoke as if you were, you know, randomly picked. I hope the topic did not, uh, you know, contribute to that. Okay, thank you. Nyeri High School had 69.1%. Let's give them a hand. But for today, our winners are the lovely ladies of Starehe Girls with 72.2%. For those who will be proceeding to the next round, it gets hotter as you go closer. And from all of us here at the Great Debaters Contest, I am your host, Austin Nyambok. And I am Mariam Bishar. We'll see you next time. The winning school will get an ICT chill-out zone with a widescreen TV, computers, webcams, and internet connection. The teacher from the winning school gets 100,000 shillings courtesy of Chase Bank. The winning students each get a tablet courtesy of Safaricom, a gift hamper from Unilever, and a gift hamper from Mimi.co.ke. 
together they all win the title, the Great Debaters. May the best school win.